guys and welcome to the first episode of Off The Cuff where we will be doing a weekly discussion of different topics in the watch world um, and today's conversation will be on Ublo and why the brand has so much hate. So Ublo is a brand that has a lot of uh, watch enthusiasts or rather to say they actually have a lot of people who likes to bash them. And at the core of the bashing lies a, uh, one, one simple reason I feel that a lot of people refer to it's really because the price doesn't justify the package or the package doesn't justify the cost. And so for as long as I've been in the hobby and for myself included, I've never really liked Ublo all that much because it's always been quite the uh, controversial brand in watchmaking and for myself personally I didn't really like it all that much because you know, just for the fact that it, the shape did not really appeal to me all that much to watch the case shape itself and I think it's quite rare to find a brand that has such a, an extreme divide of fans and haters in, in the sense that it's a very clear line where someone either likes Ublo or someone either hates Ublo, it's just right down down the wire itself, right? So I think a lot of these kind of negative commentary about Ublo as a brand stems from the fact that it is well, it has a lot of its more affordable and more entry level models such as the Classic Fusion utilize third party movements which are routinely found in watches maybe say a fifth of the price an eighth of the price in a sense right so a lot of the watches that are a lot more affordable utilizes the same SW300-1 movement that Ublo brands as the HUB1110 in the current uh, classic fusion freehander and I think that rubs a lot of people the wrong way because first of all while it's probably going to be properly regulated to I don't think it's even cross certified right and uh, at the same time it only has 42 hours of power reserve and also for the fact that it is also under finished for the price point that at about I think um, if I remember correctly seven and a half K USD so putting all of that together, if we were to just look at, in a sense, the engine of the watch itself, it's kind of like a day school, right? You're paying seven and a half grand USD for a movement, technically speaking, for a movement that you can find perhaps with an IWC, for example, that's going to cost you around like what, like 4K, which is almost about half the price. So I think that really puts a lot of people off, especially within the watch community. At the same time, I think um, the lack of attention to detail from on the part of Ublo really also rubs a lot of people the wrong way, right? For the fact that one of the easiest way to put the, to, to 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 point out is the screws on the bezel, right? It's never fully aligned. It's not like it's um, done in a in a purposeful manner. It's not done with attention and care, right? It, it feels like the worksman, or, or rather the watchmaker, simply just screw on the screw, it doesn't matter which direction the, the screw faces. It Once it screws in, it's done. Job's done. It, they don't have to align it, they don't have to make sure that it's uh, at a particular angle, it doesn't have to follow any sort of form or way or whatever it might be. So I think that also puts a lot of people off because it's feels lazy on Ublo's part, which I'll come to that in a bit, right? And I think lastly, uh, the brand releases too much limited editions, and, and I think it's tough to argue against that. Sure, you know, Ublo puts out a lot of uh, limited editions, and I think they also focuses a lot on uh, these kind of uh, uh, limited editions. And after that, they will release another one, another one. So if everyone has a limited edition, no one has a limited edition. It's just a different version of the same watch itself, right? So the brand image thus really, you know, I think to the watch enthusiast um, uh, community, it reflects a lot more of, you know, the buyer being have, having too much money for it than cents and to, the, uh, to a certain extent, the brand is just a ripoff. I can kind of relate and understand that way of thinking, I, I, I would say. Um, but I think also that is also besides the point of Ublo. 
Oblo's marketing, yes, sure, it focuses on celebrity endorsements and also, pro- but but most importantly, it, it focuses on the promotion of a specific lifestyle. And I, I personally, I'm all in for that. I believe that luxury watches, it's already an unnecessary pursuit in its own right. And Oblo, in a way, if you think about it, it's the truest and the, it represents the most raw form of just that, right? It, it really tells and shouts people, shouts to people that say, look at me, I'm Ublo, and I represent the pursuit of a luxurious lifestyle. Now this, this once again at the core might put some people off because at the end of the day, it's quite gaudy in a sense, right? The, the whole notion of pursuing wealth or the, the, the image of wealth or the image of luxury could be off-putting to some people and that's fine. But ignoring the fact that this fundamental pursuit actually, in a way, resonates across the whole watch community. And just for the fact that Ublo is very, I would say, prominent, I would say very transparent about that particular notion, I think there is something that there is merit to that, right? And it's the, the most transparent representation of the self if that represents an individual. Now, I think a lot of the times, we, we, we always try to find a watch that represents ourself as closely as possible. And to that, I say, Ublo, if that brand resonates with you, power to you, right? And, and, and I think that is where we want to wear the watch that we would wear, simply for the fact that we relate to the watch and we relate to the brand story, relate to the whole entire, you know, backstory about it, right? So many people wear Rolexes. Why? Is it inherently better than than, than Ublo? Depends on how you see it, perhaps specification-wise, yes. But if you are going to be looking at a watch that you would look on your wrist for the next, I don't know, 15, 20 years down the road, you're going to have to buy something that you would relate to personally. And that also leads down to an argument whereby Oblo doesn't have a lot of history behind it, right? And I, I will argue against that because all watch brands start off somewhere. Normals does it have a lot of history around it? Not really. It started in the 1990s. Um, perhaps if I were to say, um, what's, a, what's a different watch brand? Um, say... Uh, say Frederick Constant, for example, right? Does it have a lot of history behind it? No, but a lot of the bashing really comes into uh, Ublo's direction because of the avant-garde direction that Ublo takes. The innovation, it, it kind of fell a bit wayside just for the fact that it doesn't have history, right? So if a brand trying something new is bashed for trying something new, albeit for the fact that perhaps you might you might consider their watches being overpriced, then where is gonna where where are the uh, the innovations gonna come from? Right. So I think it it's a very lazy and pedestrian view of the brand just by looking at just the cost. And to 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 Ublo's credit as well, the Unico um, I think chronograph that it, it came up with, while it's twenty thousand dollars, while you know it is in titanium, granted, right? It's beautifully made. And you might want to say that, hey, you know what? For the money, I can get a blanc pain. For the money, I can get a perhaps, a, a, I don't know, maybe a JLC, right? That might be worth more of your money. But once again, when it comes down to worth, when it comes down to uh, uh, what you're going to be paying for, it all lies with the individual. If I like the design of Ublo, if I like the rubber strap, if I like what it stands for, the brand 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 story, the association affiliation, let's say with Kobe Bryant, late great Kobe Bryant, or uh, the association with a specific um, sports star, power to them, power to me. So I, I, I think once again, if anything, by condemning Ublo, we may really just be inhibiting the evolution of watchmaking in general, and that really would be should really be a shame. I think similarly said, like um, Tag Heuer went down a different route uh, after it's been uh, acquired by uh, Tag uh, early in, in the early early two uh, thousands and 19, 1990s. 
And I think that is where it built out a bit of a bad reputation as well, right? But right now, Tag Hoy is thriving, obviously under the same group as um, as um, uh, Ublo in LVMH. So there's a lot of um, good things that's really happening between the brands and they share a lot of information, they share a lot of production. Um, they share a lot of um, uh, design traits as well. You would see that, you know, Zenith, Tag Heuer, uh, Ublo, Every, every one of these brands are really leading the path and leading the way. And I don't see a lot of hate for Zenith um, while they push out new models of uh, integrated you know, bracelet designs. Why? Because people think that their movements are worthy of the price. But once again, it really boils down into whether you like the design of the watch or not. Like, are you going to really just going to buy a watch in this day and age just because the movement is great? I highly doubt it. You're gonna, you're not gonna be looking at the movement twenty four seven, right? So why not buy something and spy past the fact that the movement may not, may or may not be as, you know, exclusive in a sense, right? As something like uh, uh, I would say a JLC or a, a Omega C, uh, C Master, right? Does it really matter unless you're gonna wear the watch upside down? Maybe not. Once again, this is just my opinion, but please let me know what you think about the whole Ublo and its hate and its haters and, and its lovers and followers, how you see the brand. Would you pay for an Ublo because of the design or what's your emphasis when it comes down to looking for your, your, your own watch purchase? I'd love to hear from you guys, but uh, until then, this is um, Off The Cuff and uh, watch out for the next episode. Peace.